During World War II, after the Empire of Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, the Philippines, and other locations, and the United States declared war, there was another war that started. Japanese Americans were considered potential enemy agents, major threats to be isolated, whether they were long-term residents, called Issei, or even American-born of Japanese descent, called Nisei, who were second-generation Japanese Americans. Special concentration camps, called internment or relocation camps, were established to segregate them from the rest of society in several states. They were stripped of their rights as citizens, their property and businesses were confiscated, and their lives were turned upside down. But there were many who still loved the United States and would do all they could to prove their loyalty. These men would become legends to friend and foe alike. Who were the Nisei? How were they treated during World War II? How did they perform in combat? What did other Americans think of them? But also, what did the enemy think of them? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we've answered these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Japanese immigrants were longtime residents in the United States, mainly in Hawaii and along the west coast of California, Oregon, and Washington State. They had integrated into American society, even more so than other Asian immigrants, such as the Chinese. They were educated, entrepreneurial, and quite successful. Like many other ethnic groups, many Japanese Americans still held on to their religious and social customs although they navigated the business world and local commerce seamlessly. After the war started with Japan, the government under President Franklin D. Roosevelt took the incredible action of signing Executive Order 9066, rounding up over 100,000 Japanese Americans for special treatment, something we normally ascribe to Nazi Germany and its treatment of the Jews and other undesirables. Racial prejudice extended to many ethnic groups in the USA, and the Nisei were no exception, as they would learn even when serving their country. However, many barriers were thrown up at them. Yet despite this, many decided to enlist in the military. Many became interpreters and served with the Army and Marines in the Pacific, where their native language skills would help in the war effort. One of these men was Private Warren Tsunishi who translated crucial Japanese operational orders and documents. Japanese language soldiers working for intelligence worked in secret for obvious security reasons. Tsuneishi earned a bronze star for his contributions at Leyte and Okinawa. But many others would find themselves in Europe, entering combat alongside fellow Americans who sometimes did not trust them or have faith in them. They were deemed much like black soldiers, considered not really up to the task of fighting they would prove all of their critics very wrong. The Nisei were allowed to enlist, but like their fellow black Americans, they were placed in segregated units. One of these was the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, which was activated on February 1, 1943, and the recruitment began. The unit was finally formed on March 23, 1943. Hawaiian-born Nisei made up roughly two-thirds of the regiment with the remaining third composed of Nisei from the mainland United States. The motto of the unit was, Go for Broke, because they felt that they had nothing to lose. The 442nd RCT consisted of several units, such as the 522nd Field Artillery Battalion, the 232nd Combat Engineer Company, the 206th Army Ground Forces Band, an anti-tank company, a cannon company, service company, and a medical detachment, along with three infantry battalions. From May 1943 to April 1944, the men of the 442nd trained for combat, where they learned to fight as a team and were highly rated. Over time, many of these men would be sent to Europe as replacements for the 100th Infantry Battalion, another Nisei unit already fighting overseas and creating its own impressive track record. Training for the 442nd was completed in April, and on April 22, 1944, the unit left Camp Shelby in Mississippi on their journey to Europe for their first overseas assignment. They arrived in Italy in June 1944, 
where they began to fight alongside the 100th against Germans encamped across the country who were protecting the Gustav line and these soldiers were some of Germany's best and most combat experienced. By August, the 100th was absorbed into the 442nd due to casualties and with all the units serving under the motto, go for broke. In September 1944, the 442nd participated in the invasion of Southern France, successfully liberating French cities from Nazi occupation. The unit went on to fight with the 92nd Infantry Division a segregated African-American unit in driving German forces out of northern Italy. Such battles as Anzio and Monte Cassino became legendary for the brutality and tenacity of both forces. Against the odds, the men of the 100th Infantry Battalion and the 442nd Regimental Combat Team did go for broke. Despite the years of suspicion, propaganda, and racism that prevailed at home, these Nisei men fought, just as did the African-Americans of the segregated Tuskegee Airmen and other military units with great courage. They fought against incredible odds for their country, and they fought heroically, leaving behind a record that is still untouched today. Perhaps the best example of any fighting man is what their enemy thinks of them. The Germans against who the 442nd fought against in Italy and France found them to be determined and very aggressive soldiers. In fact, German Lieutenant Colonel Friedrich August Freiherr von der Heite, commanding the 6th Parachute Regiment in Italy, had his assessment and after five years of being a paratrooper at war, it's worth noting, quote, We rarely captured these men. They were cunning, very well trained and disciplined. You could hear most American soldiers coming down a road a kilometer away. They made so much noise. But these Japanese, you never even knew they were there until they were right next to you. Then it was too late. End quote. So impressed was he with their achievements in Italy, the commander of the U.S. 5th Army, Lieutenant General Mark Clark, wanted to have more of these men recruited and dispersed throughout the Army, integrating them into the general military population. But that suggestion died a very quick death. The Nisei were still second-class citizens. In September 1944, the 442nd was reassigned to the 36th Division of the 7th Army in France under General John E. Dalquist, and the Nisei were used as cannon fodder. In late October 1944, the 141st Texas Regiment of the 36th Division was cut off by Germans in the Bosges Mountains. After liberating the town of Bifontaine with great casualties, the 442nd was returned to the front lines by General Dalquist. In an attempt to save the 141st, later known as the Lost Battalion, the heavily outnumbered Nisei soldiers were sent to fight the very seasoned Germans, and the 442nd suffered heavy casualties but so did the Germans. In some cases, 442nd soldiers attempted suicide charges to take higher positions from the Germans. After finally rescuing the approximately 200 Texan soldiers who had been cut off, the Nisei soldiers had suffered about 800 casualties. Fred Shosiaki, a member of the 442nd who fought in that battle, described the event simply as Americans rescuing Americans. As the American public was introduced to their exploits, Attitudes slowly began to change as their heroism became well known. Some of the luminaries who stood out and made all Americans proud were the 21 Medal of Honor recipients. The unit, totaling about 18,000 men, earned over 4,000 Purple Hearts, 4,000 Bronze Stars, 560 Silver Stars, 21 Medals of Honor, and 7 Presidential Unit Citations, an unheard of record. Additionally, the 100th garnished their own impressive record prior to their absorption into the 442nd with similar exploits. No other regiment has covered itself as so much glory in United States military history. In 2010, various groups and advocates, including the National Veterans Network, were successful in obtaining congressional passage of the bill S-1055, awarding all members of the 100th and 442nd along with the Military Intelligence Service, the Congressional Gold Medal for their heroic service in World War II. But the men of the 442nd did not stop serving after the war. Many went on to remain in the military, some serving in Korea, while others went into business and politics. Medal of Honor recipient Daniel Inouye, an officer in the 442nd from Hawaii, played a part in making Hawaii the 50th state of the United States. When Hawaii became a state in 1959, Inouye was its first representative to Congress. In 1963, he became a U.S. Senator 
and he served in that capacity until he died in 2012. For many Nisei veterans, U.S. President Ronald Reagan's signing of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988 was a sign that their efforts and sacrifices during World War II had been recognized. The legislation was an official apology to the Japanese Americans who had been placed in internment camps during World War II and lost their property. It also provided reparation payments to the surviving internees or their heirs. The legacy of the Nisei who fought in World War II should be honored and remembered. They were amazing young men fighting for a nation that did not trust them and an army that did not always respect them and against an enemy who found them a most worthy adversary. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.